All right, what we have here is a function table, and it is given in the problem that this function table reflects a linear relationship. But we have to write an equation in y equals mx plus b form. Now, each pair of values here, or xy values, represents a single point on the coordinate plane. So if we were to graph these points on the coordinate plane, we could connect those points to make a straight line. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is just write our equation y equals mx plus b. And really what we're looking for is what our m value is, which is going to be the slope of our line, and what the b value is, which is where our line is going to intersect the y-axis at. So the first thing we're going to do is determine what is our slope or the m value. And remember, slope is defined by the change in y values as compared to the change in corresponding x values. Now the equation that you guys see a lot is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. This is the slope formula. And this little triangle here, which is a symbol called delta in math, represents change. So we can say the change in y over the change in x. So y2 minus y1, that is a change or a distance between two y values. And x2 minus x1 is the change in values between the corresponding x values. So let's go ahead and figure out the change in our first pair of y values. If we go from 36 to 56, that is an increase of 20. And if we go from 4 to 6, that is an increase of 2. Now, if we go from 56 to 86, that is an increase of 30. And from 86 to 146, that's a change in 60. And from 146 to 196, that is a change in 50. And over here, from 6 to 9, that is an increase of 3. And from 9 to 15, that is an increase of 6. And from 15 to 20, that is an increase of 5. Now, our numerator is always going to be the change in y first over the change in x. So the first change in y over the first change in x is going to be 20 over 2. The next change in y over the next change in x is going to be 30 over 3. The next is going to be 60 over 6. And the last pair of changes we have is 50 over 5. Now, if we simplify all of these right here, we're going to end up with 10. Because 20 divided by 2 is 10, as is 30 divided by 3, 60 divided by 6, and 50 divided by 5. So the slope of this line is going to be 10. So what we're going to do is we're going to write y equals 10x plus b. All right, now what we have to do is figure out what our b value is. Now, right now we have one, two, three variables, and we have a 10 right here, or a coefficient of 10. And if we were to substitute any two of these letters with a value, we can take the one letter left over and solve for it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take one point from our function table and substitute it in for the x and the y of our equation. So for this y here, we're going to plug in 36. And then we're going to take 10 and multiply it by the corresponding x value, which in this case is 4. And then we're going to solve for b to figure out where does our line cross the y-axis. So we're going to simplify our equation a little further. We're going to write 36 equals 40 plus b. All right, now what we got to do is figure out what do we add to 40 to make 36? Well, we have to go backwards from 40 to get to 36, which means we have to add a negative number. So to get to 36 from 40, we would have to go backwards a value of 4. So b must be equal to negative 4. So we can just say that b is equal to negative 4. Now, when solving for the y-intercept or the value of b, if you come up with a negative number, what you do is, after your x value in the equation, you just write minus that number. So because the y-intercept is negative 4, we just write minus 4 at the end of our equation. So y equals 10x minus 4 is the equation that represents the relationship of the value shown in this table right here. 
So if we were to plug any pair of values into our equation, we would come up with a true statement. So if we plug in this value here, 6 into our equation, we would get 10 times 6 is 60, and 60 take away 4 is 56. Or if we took this 9 here and we plugged it into x, we would get 10 times 9 is 90, minus 4 is 86. So all of the values, once we plug them into this equation, do check out. All right, let's go ahead and do another example. Okay, the first thing that we're going to do is examine the change in our y values. So we start with 2 and we go to 2.5, which is an increase of 0.5. And then we go from 2.5 to 4, which is an increase of 1.5. And then from 4 to 6.5 is an increase of 2.5. And from 6.5 to 8 is an increase of 1.5. Now for the corresponding x values, we have an increase of 1 from 7 to 10, that is an increase of 3. From 10 to 15 is an increase of 5. And from 15 to 18, we have an increase of 3. All right, now we have to express all of these changes as ratios. So the first change in y over the first change in x is 0.5 over 1. The next one we have is 1 and a half or 1.5 over 3. And the next one we have is 2.5 over 5. And the last one we have is 1.5 over 3. Now, if we take a look at all of these ratios here, we should be able to see that the numerator is exactly half of the denominator, which means our slope or m value is going to be equal to 1 half. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our slope intercept formula, y equals mx plus b, and we are going to substitute 1 half in for our m value. All right, now to solve for the b value, we have to take a point from our function table and plug it into our equation. So we're going to take the number 2 and plug it in for y, we're going to take the corresponding x value, which is 6, and plug it in for x to figure out what our b value is. So we're going to simplify this to be 2 equals 1 half of 6, which is 3. And now we have to figure out what would we add to 3 so it equals 2. And we would have to add negative 1 to 3 to get to 2. So our b value is equal to negative 1. So what we're going to do here is write the equation y equals 1 half x minus 1, which is the equation that represents the linear relationship of the values in the function table. All right, thanks for checking out this video, and please don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you can become informed as new tutorials become available.